I want to keep the vocal front and center in my mix. But there are some lines that are a little too quiet and others that really jump out. If I turn the vocal up enough to get those quieter lines loud enough, the louder parts are going to be too loud and they may even clip. The problem we're running into here is that the human voice has a very large dynamic range. That means there's a big difference between the loudest and quietest parts of the vocal. So how can we make the vocal louder without clipping? One approach is to use a compressor. That's because the compressor works like an automatic volume control. It automatically turns down the volume of a sound whenever the volume goes above a certain level or a threshold. So a compressor can take a really dynamic part, like a vocal track, and reduce the difference between the loudest and quietest parts. It's actually compressing the dynamic range of the part, and that's why we call it a compressor. You can use a compressor whenever you want to keep something at a consistent volume. A compressor can make a part more prominent, like a vocal, or make sure a part doesn't jump out unexpectedly, like a bass. So we're going to use Reaper's built-in compressor, Recomp, but let's put Recomp on our vocal track. So we'll go to the Effects button here. We already have Retune. We're going to Add Effect, and we're already on the filter for Kakos plugins, so let's use Recomp. It's the one right here at the top. And we say OK. There are a lot of parameters to play with on Recomp. Understanding how all the parameters on a compressor affect the sound takes time and practice to gain a really solid understanding. I'm going to talk about some of the most common parameters you might want to start adjusting. They are the threshold, ratio, attack, release. And we're also going to look at the gain reduction meter and auto makeup. So first let's talk about the threshold. And that's on this fader right here. This is our threshold. And so the threshold is like the line above which the compressor starts to turn down the volume. So in this case, whenever the signal goes above minus 18, the compressor will pull down the volume. Now by how much? That's the question. And that's what the ratio is for. And that's this fader right here. Now, the ratio is kind of the relative amount that the volume gets turned down, and it's expressed as a ratio, which makes sense. So in this case, it's 3 to 1, meaning that for every 3 decibels the signal goes above that threshold, the compressor will only raise it by 1. Above that, right here, are the attack and release times. Now, the attack is how long it takes for the compressor to actually start pulling down the volume when it goes over the threshold and the release is how long it takes for the compressor to bring the volume back to normal after it goes back under the threshold. Fast attack and release times sound more processed than slower attack and release times. And these times are measured in milliseconds, so they're really always quite fast. The next thing we want to look at is this thing right here, this red area. This is the gain reduction meter, and it shows us how much the compressor is pulling down the level. The last thing we want to look at right now is this checkbox right here, which is Auto Makeup. And when this is on, the compressor automatically compensates for the gain reduction it's doing. So if we see four decibels of gain reduction on this meter, the compressor will automatically adjust the overall output and raise it by about 4 dB. So I leave this on by default. The other controls can also be useful, but they go outside the scope of this video. Last thing I want to look at are the presets. So most of Reaper's plugins have a selection of presets available from this drop-down menu at the top of the plugin window. I suggest going through the presets and find something that works in the context in which you're using it. Most of these are actually quite well described. I mean, there's things like, here we go, spanky bass. Maybe that's not well described. Maybe it is. If you know what that is, you may want to start with that one. We've included some audio hacker starting points as well. Now, Remember that all these presets are really just starting points, and how they work really depends on the audio they're processing. So let's actually do something with this. I'm going to start with the Audio Hacker 3 to 1 Smooth. And actually what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to bypass the compressor, and that's just by checking this box here. Now let's just take a listen where we're at. So this is without the compressor on. Okay, now let's turn the compressor on and hear that again. What may this pain pass away? 
our paths will cross again someday. Now I can already hear that it brought up the level of the vocal in the mix, and that's because the auto makeup is on. So let's go about actually changing some of these settings. Let's try lowering the threshold. What may this pain pass away? Our paths will cross again someday. The same. Oh, now you see the gain reduction meter here is doing a lot more it's much more active because we've lowered that threshold so there's more audio above it which means more of the signal is being processed now if we raise the threshold all the way to zero i'll just double click to do that and i hit play what may this pain we don't see any gain reduction and that I'll means pass. that the compressor really isn't doing anything in this state so if we don't see any gain reduction on the meter, the compressor isn't doing anything. And that's regardless of the other settings on the compressor. So it only works when the audio is above the threshold. I'm actually gonna to switch to a different preset now. I'm gonna use Audio Hacker 3 to 1 Edgy. And the big difference here, the attack and release times are quite a bit different. So it's going to have a slightly different character to it. So let's just take a listen. I'm going to press play and we're going to listen to a bit. I'm going to get the gain reduction coming down to about minus six on average. I'm going to clear this just by clicking on it and I'll hit play and uh, we'll see what we can do. What may this pain pass away? Our paths will cross again someday. The same old. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now you might find that after adding a compressor to the track, we may need to readjust the volume on its track fader. And that's okay. We just make sure that we're happy with the level. So I think maybe the vocal is actually a little bit hot now, which means just a little loud. I'm just gonna hit play again. What may this I can pull it down a bit. Pass away. Our paths will cross again someday. But basically, you can tell that the vocal now is really staying in one place. It's not going down too far, and it's not jumping up. It's really holding its own in the mix. So even just taking the time to understand the threshold, the ratio, and the gain reduction meters will help you on your way to creating better sounding recordings. Again, compression is a bit of a tricky thing to get the hang of, so don't worry if you're feeling a little unsure about how to set attack and release times, for example. The more practice you get, the easier it will become. But I do hope you have a better understanding of how compression helps you increase the average level of the track while helping to prevent clipping.